We didn't realize that you needed to have um, a license to have a market. So when we applied, we were really nervous because we're like, we're just two people, no experience, no background in presenting a market ever before. Um, and we were really nervous about it, but we sat down together, we did the application and literally they gave us, they granted it us the next day. Kelly Morgan. Hi. You've got, <laughs> you've got uh, an event taking place on Sunday the 5th of yeah. December, this Sunday. What's going on? Yeah. Melanin Market, Sunday the 5th of December. It's um, a Christmas market celebrating Black-owned businesses from 12 until 5 at Contact on Oxford Road. Fantastic. You know, you've made it look a little bit simpler than it actually is. This is a huge event. Uh, this mm. is an event that is, you know, been building up for a long time. And uh, you've been working uh, tirelessly with uh, your uh, partner, Bianca. Tell us about yeah. that. Yeah, so, I mean, me and Bianca have been, I guess, imagining something like this separately for a while. Um, and... For October's Black Pound Day, one of our mutual friends got us together and was like, listen, you keep talking about a Black Pound market. You keep talking a Black Pound market. Put your heads together and make it happen. And from then, we literally have been spending pretty much every day trying to make this happen. Yeah. And we're really grateful that it's kind of spiraled and become it's become bigger than we thought we it would initially be if that makes yeah. sense we had we have been able to host more stalls than we originally thought we would be able to host more than we even thought would sign up yeah <laughs> um, and in such a wonderful building at the contact theater which is a space which our community doesn't necessarily feel comfortable taking up all the time but other communities do and so it's a good place for the the variety of communities in Manchester to come together for this cause. Yeah, and it's interesting that you say that, you know, the black community perhaps doesn't feel so comfortable in that venue, which is a surprise to me, actually, because of the events that you would think take place there. Um, why is it important, you think, for uh, uh, organisations like yourself to host events in big venues like The Contact? And of course, you've got history with this, that Contact Theatre itself. Yeah, I mean, I worked for Contact just over, I think just about 10 years ago now. I was there as a project manager and um, Bianca still works for Contact. She does um, uh, duty management there. She does um, digital marketing there. Uh, Bianca is one of those people who can do many things. Um, so, yeah, we've both had that history with Contact. And I guess Contact has been closed for about three years. Um, so they've not even had the capacity to do the outreach within our community. Um, but also with it being a theatre space, there's just so many unknowns. Um, and I think at various times there has, our community has felt like we could be in that building and enjoy the work that Contact produces. Uh, but as it stands at the moment, we felt like we were hearing a lot of people go, oh, Contact, is, this, is that still there? Is that still for us? And um, it's not even just Contact. It just tends to be a conversation when, it, when we think about theatre and presentation and the ability to be black proudly in in those spaces yeah really good point you make there uh, and, and I think it's about representation and uh, you know you're certainly upholding a community and you know you're playing your part in that what does it mean to you um, to be that recognized for the work that you're doing and of course it means it's bigger than yourself but you are playing a vital role in uh, uplifting the community perhaps yeah <laughs> um I think it's amazing that it's it's kind of gotten bigger than us. I think 
we originally thought it was going to be about 20 people <laughs> 20 20 stalls maybe 20 people just popping by on a sunday afternoon um, it means so much to us that the community has recognised the need for this and have wanted this and have kind of gotten behind us and supported it. Um, yeah, it just means a lot. And we're really hopeful and looking forward to being able to do more next year. And it's interesting that, you know, you only expected a certain amount of uh, 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 stalls to be uh, taking place. But then it's it's just grown into this huge thing. You've been overwhelmed in terms of, uh, the number of vendors that want to take part in this event. How have you um, handled that? And, you know, at what point did you and Bianca realise, whoa, hang on a minute, what is going on here? This is going to be huge. Um, <laughs> so we had a call out um, and we have, we currently have people who have um, applied to be storeholders. Um, we had to we had a deadline of up to like the 25th of November. And the reason we had that deadline was because there was various bits of paperwork that we needed to be able to submit a week advance of the event. Um, but actually, we got so many sign-ups that we started to go, right, well, we have to do it on a payment first basis. And then everybody just paid. And we got to like, I think, person number 40 on the 9th of November. And we were like, oh, wait, 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 wait. We, need to, we need to stop people trying to pay us or trying to sign up anymore. Um, and it was just kind of like, wow, we didn't even know so many people had heard about the event at that point. Um, and it has been a learning experience for us as well in terms of like what we might do differently in the sign up process going forward next year um, and what the, the requirements might be, for instance. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, you know, again, it's been a huge event. It's been, you know, widely uh, publicised and, uh, you know, it's really grabbed the attention of um, uh, a lot of people, media agencies. You know, you've got Manchester Evening News on your case as well. Congratulations, by the way. Great article. Um, and of course, you know, featuring on podcasts and all sorts of things. You know, does it feel like Christmas has come early for you? <laughs> we definitely feel really festive very festive I think we're both looking forward to like the week of Christmas where we can both kind of go <laughs> and just relax and enjoy the festivities with our family but yeah it, it does feel like a special Christmas lesson that this event has gained so much attention gained so many people wanting to talk about it and be there and uh, we've had people even today like an hour ago like what can we do to help you do you need like anyone to help set up do you need someone to I don't know do face painting or something and we've kind of gone actually thankfully we've kind of sent off all of our paperwork and really got quite organized with this and um, so at the moment now it's just like those little bits in the end that we're trying to put together uh, and on Sunday that's probably going to be the biggest manic point but I feel really excited about it as well not too overwhelmed yet. So you're both very admin minded aren't you both uh, yourself and Bianca? Yeah I think um, Bianca is someone who is like very visual and she needs to see that everything's in place. I am quite visual too, but I'm more of the person who'd be like, right, we need a spreadsheet for this. <laughs> we need <laughs> templates. We need like, um, like with the Google sign up forms and stuff like that. I enjoy those admin bits as well. So we both really complement each other. And like, there's been moments where I've not seen something and she's gone, ha, huh, we need to do that and vice versa. That's good. So there's definitely that left brain, right brain, nice collaboration going on there. Yeah. So again, you know, when I think about this event, it's almost like, you know, when you're looking forward to Christmas Day and unboxing your presents and it's the big build up and each day you're getting, you know, you're counting the sleeps and, uh, you know, as Leona Lewis said, you know, a uh, couple of more sleeps before we get there. Um and, you know, when the big day comes, yes, it's exciting. You enjoy it. And then at the end of it, you think, oh, it's it's gone. It's it's happened. What's going to happen with Melanin Markets post 5th of December? Can we expect 
something in the spring, in the autumn, and in, in the summer months? Tell I us. Mean, we definitely we hope so. We definitely hope so. I mean, me and Bianca are going to get together maybe the week after the event and kind of brainstorm some ideas of what's next. But also, a lot of people have reached out to us as well to say, let's let's talk about collaboration going forward. Um, so, yeah, so we're hoping that those things will actually manifest. We definitely are going to work on bringing Melanin Markets back next year um, for Christmas, absolutely for certain. Um, but we're trying to think of, like, there's so many things, like, um, we want to be able to maybe host, like, a business networking opportunity at some point. We'd love to do, like, pop-ups during the summer, maybe something for Black History Month, um, but definitely Melanin Markets by Christmas next year again. How do you split the time between working on this as well as running your business? We're still learning that. <laughs> it's It's incredible because, like, We've got this um, we've got this way of working where we use WhatsApp and we both understand that we have um, our phones on silent at different points of the day. However, it's like we'll both be up at two o'clock in the morning with an idea and we'll voice note it to each other and get instant replies. And we're just like, you're not supposed to listen to that now. You're supposed to wait until tomorrow morning. But I just needed to get it off my mind before I forget it so I can go to sleep. Um, so yeah, I feel like we've been really buzzing off the momentum, but it's definitely going to be something for us to make sure that we're getting the balance right going forward. And were you and Bianca all is this close? Um, I, I know that you were connected through a, a mentor that you both, um, you know, know. But was it always that kind of relationship, or has this event uh, allowed you guys to grow closer? So this event's definitely allowed us to grow closer. Like, so we were in the same circle for about maybe a year or two. Um, I moved back from Manchester. I moved, I moved back to Manchester from London um, in 2020. And I started working at the armor store um, in um, Ardwick. Um, and I would see Bianca quite often because she would bring her products in. Um, also, she's mentored by someone I consider a mentor, Fallacy, um, so I kind of knew of her and she kind of knew of me. But in terms of us getting together, having conversations, swapping numbers, that all happened in October on Black Pound Day. <laughs> so, yeah, but I definitely feel like she's someone I absolutely needed in my world. And she said the same thing about me too, which is an absolute honour. Um, and we definitely feel like the universe has brought us together for a reason. Indeed, the lines have fallen onto you in pleasant places. So <laughs> everything's worked out nicely. Uh, but of course, it takes a lot of hard work. You know, you guys are uh, really hard working. You know, I see you guys constantly, uh, you know, just plugging this event and just doing what you can to just give it the attention it deserves. Uh, you know, that work ethic has to come from somewhere. Uh, you know, where does that come from? What, you know, what's driven you guys so much like this? I think it's passion, definitely passion. We're both really passionate about making sure we're proactive in raising up the black community. Um, it's also it's also we have a lot of reflective conversations. We're constantly learning from each other and sharing experiences. Um, so for instance, I don't have anyone in my family who's come from a business background. And so when I originally came up with like my business planting avenue, I didn't really have anyone to, to kind of steer me in the right direction there. And it's a similar conversation with um, Bianca as well. So she's got her business, which is Ruby Dean Designs. Um, and again, we're very much rolling off passion and curiosity and like a very I guess a positive kind of obsession on making sure that we're doing things the right way I think we're both kind of researchers as well so it's that whole thing of like okay how do we do this what do we need who can we ask where can we go and um, and then bringing all that together speaking to each other or speaking to people about it and going forward from that point do you think you find your purpose in this I feel like I'm constantly finding my purpose. I feel like this is one of my purposes, yeah. And I'm really happy that it's actualised. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm about to turn 33 this week. And I feel like I'm always constantly finding 
areas of myself, if that makes sense. But this is something that I know has been brewing for a long time. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> and what a week to be celebrating your birthday. Was it coincidental or it just happened to be? It was coincidental, to be honest. It was kind of like we went to contact and we said, right, we want to do this. What days have you got free? And they actually didn't really have any days free. So we convinced them to open up on a Sunday for us, basically. Uh, so it wasn't, it's, you know, it wasn't planned this way, but I'm happy that it came around this way. And how much support have you received from Manchester City Council? Oh, my gosh. OK, so the one of the best things about the support from Manchester City Council, it hasn't been a lot because we haven't actually asked a lot of them. However, we didn't realise that you needed to have um, a licence to have a market. So when we applied, we were really nervous because we're like, we're just two people, no experience, no background in presenting a market ever before. Um, and we were really nervous about it, but we sat down together, we did the application and literally they gave us, they granted it us the next day. Um, there was a few things on the application that we needed to tweak, but the lady was like, all right, you just need to send us this, you need to send us that, but the application's granted. Um, and so, and that's the main thing, really. <laughs> if they didn't do that so soon, I'm not sure the momentum would have picked up as quickly as it did. And we certainly wouldn't have been able to get store holders and start pr promoting it as soon as we did. Yeah, sounds, uh, it's always good if uh, the city council's there to back you and push you. And there's a lot of people that wish you well with this. Uh, you know, again, the publicity that you've been getting is certainly warranted. And, you know, you guys have worked incredibly hard. Um, have you had any pushback? Um, not, not overt pushback, no. I think there has been a lot of conversations where we've had with both our community and then in organising the event, which have been minor things that sometimes because we're so passionate about what we do, it's really frustrating. It's like, look, how can we turn that no into a yes? How can we get you the paperwork that you need to have? Do you know what I mean? So I feel like if we were two different people, there would have been certain points where we would go, oh, you know, just cancel this, <laughs> cancel the event, it's done, it's over. Uh, but actually, I think we've both been diplomatic enough and charming enough uh, to push through and turn a lot of no's into a yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> and and I, and I think that's, that's the main thing as well, isn't it? Despite, you know, some setbacks, and which I'm sure you've had, it's knowing again your why, why are you doing this? And it's having that, you know, goal and working towards it and the support that you've had from Bianca. And she would say the same again, the support that you've given her has given her a reason to go on and has given you a reason to go on. And that's why that partnership has worked really well. And again, it goes to the point why it's so important to work in collaboration. You know, tell us why is it so important to work in a team? We need to know that. Yeah, I definitely think you touched on it there. I think like there is moments like there's that whole transfer of energy as well. Like there's been moments where I've been so tired and I've kind of gone, I don't want to respond to that email right now. I'm going to take 10 minutes, have a cup of tea. I need to chat out. I need to chat it out before I can type it out, if that makes sense. And it's been amazing to just voice not be anchor and just be like, okay, like, what do you think about this? How should I go about it? So that's one of my key things about collaboration because sometimes we're so much in our own heads that it, sometimes we convince ourselves that our feelings or our perspectives are not valid or that we're imagining that there may be something that's happening. Um, and sometimes we just need some encouragement but having Bianca there to do that for me and vice versa has been key. If I was doing it on my own, I would not have had that person to bounce back and forth with. But also it's about playing to each other's strengths as well. Bianca and I have 
two different strength asset assets like I'm probably more of a networker someone who's ready to have conversations with people and do emails and administration whereas she's a visualizer and she can imagine things and go right this is what it needs to look like so for instance on our Instagram like because she's got that digital background she's been able to take a lead on like how things are presented um, and I'm kind of like I'm not going to touch that too much <laughs> you know what you're doing <laughs> yeah but yeah you know I, I love hearing that story and whenever I hear that I'm, I'm always just imagining that day when the two of you just thought do you know what let's just go with it let's <laughs> let's just run with this and let's see where it takes us do you, do you ever reflect back to that day and think thank goodness we did that or what were we thinking you know what I do like shout out to Sharon Raymond because she was the person who connected us and I had to we went to um Coffee Nubia on Princess Road the other day and I was like you know what lunch is on me because like <laughs> you have like put our heads together to make this happen the amount of times me and Bianca had been in the same space walked past each other said hello politely I never thought let's sit down and have a conversation and make this happen it was literally Sharon who was like sit down, have a conversation, you have both come through contact, maybe contact the place to do this. Um, and had she had not kind of drawn our attention to that, Melanin Markets probably wouldn't be here today. Yeah, it's always nice when, uh, you know, somebody from outside can see clearly what needs to be done. And I think it's good to have that sort of connection to somebody who can say to you, look, it's as clear as day. I can see here what you guys need to do. You know, you're both fighting for the same cause and you both want the same thing, but you're not working together. But, you know, they can see it as clear as day, but because you're inside looking out, you can't really see the bigger picture. So, exactly. again, you can see the value in having someone mentor you like uh, Sharon has. So, uh, of course, you know, we need to know how we can get hold of, uh, how we can get to this event. It's at the Contact Theatre. Um yeah. Where is the contact theatre and yeah, so what's the, the contact, contact for you? <laughs> <laughs> the contact theatre is on Oxford Road, literally in the heart of Manchester. Um, I would say if there were any people driving, then come via the back instead of the front, because obviously Oxford Road has a weird congestion. Denmark Road, road. you don't want to get yourself uh, you don't want to get yourself a uh, uh, 30, <laughs> 30 pound fine. I don't even know how much it is because I myself do not take that route. <laughs> I literally come through the back. Use, use then um, I shouldn't so, be giving yeah. that away because I'm giving away my parking spaces, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, like, on a Sunday, there should be ample parking anyway. There are like single yellow lines, but you can park on them on a Sunday, which is great. Um, so yeah, but other than that, you can get the bus um, down Oxford Road, jump off straight outside contact. Um, and yeah, it's free to attend. Um, we want everyone to just spend their money with the black businesses specifically. So we're not ticketing or um, taking anything from the event in that capacity um, and you don't need to book a ticket you just turn up between 12 and 5. Fantastic between 12 and 5 that's Sunday the 5th of December this Sunday uh, contact theatre incredible and uh, you've also got um, social media handle again I know that you're very active on uh, Instagram uh, what's your social media handle so that people can connect? Yep, so it's Melanin Markets with an S, MCR at the end of that. So it's Melanin Market MCR on Instagram. Um, and also we have been announcing that we're going to have a Black Santa at 3pm as well. So if anyone's got kids and even adults, we've got gifts for kids and adults today. I mean, on Sunday. Fantastic. Wow, thank you so much, Kelly. It's been an absolute joy talking to you. Thank you for sharing uh, with us what we can expect on uh, on Sunday the 5th of December. It's going to be a huge day. It's going to be a huge event. And, uh, you know, it's great to have, uh, you know, people like yourself who are doing the right thing in supporting uh, Black-owned businesses and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, do, supporting, uh, working uh, closely with organisations such as Bob Expo. And uh, it's uh, it's an absolute joy to, to have you here today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you. 
If you want some amazing inspiration, check out the videos next to me and I'll see you right there.